This is fall in the Sierra Nevada mountains of California. A brief color show where trees paint the high peaks and canyons with red and gold. And where people come to explore before winter shuts its doors. The summer crowds are gone. The air is crisp and clear. And if you know where to look, you might just grab a moment in time that captures the magic. I grabbed the camera and just headed up the hill and I realized that you're, you're not thinking about anything but that shot at the moment. And then pretty soon you realize you're not thinking about all the other stuff. When you travel, the world becomes a smaller place. When you explore with friends that share a love of photography, destinations come to life. This water is emerald green. We tell the stories of travel with our cameras, capturing some of the most beautiful locations on Earth. But every adventure reveals more than what's in the frame. Thunder Boomer, as we see him popping up right now. The people, the food, and unexpected turns in the journey. Now they're gonna swim right with him. <laughs> brings the full experience of travel into focus. On the east side of the Sierra Nevada mountains, on a drive known as the June Lake Loop, fall comes early. and cold overnight temps send cues to the aspen and alder groves that winter is coming. The Sierra Range frames the great San Joaquin Valley of California to the east, and before deep snows lock the high country down until spring, a short but spectacular color show attracts people who know the magic of these mountains in fall. The side of the Sierra Nevada range is sparsely populated with small towns along Highway 395. Near Mono Lake and the town of Lee Vining, dirt roads wind their way through the sage and grass toward the dramatic uprising of the Sierra's eastern face. Here, below Parker Peak, the transformation of fall foliage has begun. Aspen groves on the eastern facing slopes go from green to gold in mid-October painting the hillsides with brilliant color in the late afternoon light. Trees like these aspens pull water from the ground through their roots. The leaves pull in carbon dioxide gas from the air. Trees use sunlight to turn carbon dioxide and water into glucose, a kind of sugar that give these trees the energy they need to live. This process is called photosynthesis and relies on a chemical called chlorophyll to make it happen. Chlorophyll is what makes leaves green. In the summer, when there is both more light and water, leaves, the food factories of trees are flooded with chlorophyll to keep the photosynthesis machine running and remain green. But as days shorten and groundwater dries up, these trees shut down their food making process and get ready for a long winter sleep. Photosynthesis ends, chlorophyll fades, and the gold, yellows, and orange pigments that were always in the leaves is now revealed. just a few weeks or less, entire groves of trees will go from green to their fall colors to completely bare. So timing a trip just right to see this show is everything.
On a cold October morning in Silver Lake, California, photographers gather on a sandy point in search of the perfect picture. Here, along the June Lake Loop Drive, the shores are lined with large aspens that are now in their peak fall color. Once the rising sun clears the hills to the east, rays of light will bring the bright gold in the leaves to life, reflecting off the still waters of the lake framed by majestic peaks. It's the perfect place for photographers to wait for the right light and moment to capture. So coming here to, to actually the, the June Lake Loop and especially Silver Lake, what's behind me is the colors just, once this, for, especially for sunrise, the glow just comes into the mountains and it hits the peaks perfectly. Then in the, especially in the mornings, uh, the reflection is just I mean, phenomenal. And all the photographers come out here and they want to get to capture the same, the same moment and they just want to bring back home uh, what they captured. A couple months ago, I was in Wyoming, and going to Wyoming kind of kind of gave me this feel. You have different type of uh, terrain. You have from the aspen trees to the to the mountain, the huge mountains, uh, especially with the, the peaks there. Going to Convict Lake, you have just all different type of things for landscape photographers, and that's why everybody comes here, especially for fall, to capture the colors. Social media has become an excellent way to track the changing seasons and when colors hit their peak in places like the June Lake Loop. So since we live four hours away in Livermore, California, uh, usually on my Instagram, I'm also, also checking hashtags for locations, uh, geotags, uh, especially I look up uh, Instagram, their name is uh, Model County Tourism, and they kind of show you uh, a percentage of what the colors are here in Eastern Sierra. Uh, once I see there's a good uh, percentage for a certain location, then I jam over here with all my friends and we capture what we can. The June Lake Loop and surrounding mountains of Mono County has become one of California's fall color hotspots. Taking Highway 120 over Tioga Pass through Yosemite is the best and fastest way to get here from the Bay Area and Central California. But this route is closed if there is any snow in the forecast or on the ground. From Southern California, taking 395 up from the south is the best bet all year round. Whether you're a serious hobbyist or a smartphone direct to Instagram kind of photographer, a trip to the June Lake Loop Mono Lake area in fall when the leaves electrify these landscapes with color will keep you coming back. The western slope of the Sierra rise much more gradually than the east side. The fertile fields of the San Joaquin Valley's rich agricultural lands give way to rolling foothills dotted with oak and cottonwood trees. Here, the biting cold that has turned the aspens of the east side gold hasn't arrived yet. These lower elevation white and blue oaks are still in their summer foliage and have survived another California wildfire season. Higher up in elevation near the southern entrance to Yosemite National Park, the devastation of recent wildfires 
dramatically changes the landscape. The speed and intensity these fires can move has to be seen in person to be believed. Thousands of acres can burn in a single day, scorching everything right down to the ground. So here in the central Sierra Nevada mountains of California, it's a lot different than the east side of the Sierras. East side of the Sierra is very steep escarpment off the east side of the Sierras down into the Owens Valley. Here, it's a gentle slope to the west down to the San Joaquin Valley. It's also much more forested here on the west side and you get into a really big conifer forest here. We're about 5,000 feet, maybe not quite 5,000 feet in elevation and wildfires are a big thing here in California. You see it on the news all the time and you wonder what the effects of those fires look like. As you can see, the fires burn so fast, so incredibly hot and spread so quickly here when the right conditions exist with wind and, and low humidity um, that they can literally burn thousands of acres an hour. It can really do that much damage. Part of the problem with why that happens is is what's been sort of a lack of forest management, in my opinion, about uh, letting forests just grow. When you let forests just do their thing naturally, that's okay, as long as you don't have population centers around those places. I think whenever you have people next to forests, then you have to manage the forest. If this forest had been properly managed, like we're seeing now, like the state of California is now doing, had that been done here, who knows? This might have not been that big of a fire to, uh, to contain, and we might not be looking at remnants of a once great, you know, conifer forest that was here. Yeah, there's something, it, it's, it's pretty in a different way, but it's still, it's still pretty. You had to kind of think, I mean, when you're sit, standing in the middle of a burn like this, to think of how hot and how violent it had to be when it happened. And these trees were torched and they went quick. Yosemite National Park in fall is a special place. As one of the national park system's most popular parks, Yosemite is always busy. But after Labor Day, the massive crowds shrink dramatically, and in late October and early November, the waterfalls and granite cliffs of Yosemite Valley share the spotlight with dogwoods, big leaf maple, and black oak. Yosemite Valley is an easy place to navigate. There are plenty of places to pull over and explore with short walks from the car. With the crowds and traffic that bring an audible buzz to the valley in summer now gone, the visual beauty of Yosemite is complemented with the sounds of the Merced River gently flowing and the fall winds passing through a crown of giant black oaks at El Capitan Meadow. At 4,000 feet above sea level, Yosemite Valley's elevation keeps this part of the park open year round. Soon, winter storms from the Pacific will slam into California, blanketing the high Sierra with deep snow. Occasionally, if the storms are exceptionally cold, snow will fall this low and will replace golden carpets of big leaf maple leaves with white. But in early November, 70 degree days, cloudless skies and sunshine are not uncommon on the western slopes of the Sierra. And there are plenty of places off the beaten path to explore not far from Yosemite that bring an added level of peace and solitude for those willing to take the road less traveled. Kevin and Sarah are a father-daughter nature team. They've been sharing a love for hiking and photography in the mountains east of Fresno, California, since Sarah was a little girl. Today, they're investigating a place they heard about from a friend that is far from any towns paved roads and is a place not highlighted on any map. I've been into nature photography for about 
15 years. I needed something to take my mind away from uh, just the busy uh, hustle and bustle of work and I just needed to find something that was relaxing and I grabbed a camera and just headed up the hill and realized just how much I fell in love with it. I just realized how much I enjoyed it and it, I realized that you're, you're not thinking about anything but that shot at the moment and then pretty soon you realize you're not thinking about all the other stuff. For as long as I can remember, I've been coming up here. Um, I've been hiking since I was in elementary school, so it's been at least 10 years of hiking. It is just him and I, this is our thing to do. I think we live such busy lives anymore, and it feels like as I continue to get older, I continue to feel like time just gets away from us, and so this is our time to remember what's important and that the two of us are still so close, and it means the world to me that we're this close. In the fall, it's just the color, the, the difference, the, the changes, the leaves are changing, the, uh, even the, the grasses are, are changing. And just to have the granite backdrop with the, the colors and the, the simple thing of a leaf on a rock uh, with maybe some water around it, uh, it just opens up opportunities for an amazing shot. I had heard about this spot and talking to different people and I've always gone up to Yosemite and, and the Eastern Sierras to, to capture color in this time of year. And so I just thought uh, this was a perfect opportunity. Uh, Sarah and I had uh, a small time uh, window of time uh, today to, to go check out this spot and man, I am just so thankful I did. This part of Central California in the Sierra Nevada mountains was home to the Mono tribe of Native Americans, and signs of their summer camps can be found scattered throughout the range. Here, on a granite overlook, a large grinding rock comes into view. This is where Mono women would sit and grind acorns into meal before cooking. Water from the nearby creek would be used to leach the bitter tannins out of the acorn meal before it was prepared to eat. I can't believe it. I mean, to, to grind it and to grind all these holes. And I think it's an inch every hundred years. It, it takes a, every hundred years to go an inch. Look how deep this is. That's incredible. I mean, look how round it is. But could you imagine just sitting here? And this is your view right here. And... <laughs> I mean, it's no wonder they chose this as a, a place to, to make home. And... Oh, yeah. Uh, you got the river going through. You sit there and I just running my hands through there and just looking up and watching the water and it was just so peaceful and, and so calm and it just, it was really touching to just be able to, I felt like I was connected with them almost, that I was there to, to experience that it was beautiful. I had heard about the grinding holes up here, and you know I'd never really seen them. I, I, you hear about them, and 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 the fact that you know it takes a hundred years to to go an inch, and you think, yeah, well, well okay, and uh, you realize, well, these holes are like nine, ten inches deep. Man, people were up here for a long time. And uh, to be a part of that and to sit where Native Americans sat here and did this is, boy, coming around the corner and you see this big granite slab and this beautiful granite amphitheater and the river coming through. Wow, you just can't buy that. That's just priceless right there. I think for me personally to, to come up here um, and be alone in the woods is, 
is spiritual. You just let everything go. I've, I've been going over to the east side of the Sierras for about five years. Um, I was exposed to that area through a workshop and it just opens up the doors. Uh, there is just so much up there. Uh, it's completely different from uh, Yosemite uh, per se. Uh, just the, the rock and the mountains and the, the foliage, uh, the, the aspens, uh, absolutely beautiful. The colors are just on fire on that side. October is probably uh, late September, early October is about when the leaves start popping. It gets crowded there, uh, so you have to find your niche and get up there early uh, and grab a spot. Further downstream, the surrounding forests open into a massive granite floored bowl tucked below a high ridge that protects this place from view of nearby trails and roads. Sarah and Kevin literally have all of this to themselves for the afternoon. This place is absolutely breathtaking. It's amazing. It just shows you that you don't have to go to these national parks and, and look at all the tourist spots that everybody goes to. You can, boy, yeah. go off the trail and then... Look what you find. I, I doubt that many people have been up here to see this. Yosemite, it's it's beautiful, but you do have to fight crowds often, and and where it is fun, but spending this time with Padre, it's nice just to to have him and I together, and getting onto this kind of off the beaten path area here was was amazing, and you just, I mean, I had this these holes to ourselves, we had this beautiful water where this granite was all to ourselves, and we just got to walk and explore, and it was so quiet, and just the two of us, and that's what made this trip amazing. It's emotional for me. To spend one time with Sarah, that's, it's priceless. Uh, I, her age, I guess her age, uh, you don't spend much time with your folks and for her to enjoy doing that with me is uh, pretty cool. Spending time outside and away from the usual grind of life is something any of us can do. The colors and foliage aren't the only things that transform in the Sierra Nevada mountains of California in fall. This place takes on a different pace and feel that signal the end of something along with the beginning of something new. Taking the time to capture these moments in places like this, build the memories we take with us for a lifetime.